Today is Saturday, March 12th, 2022, and it's a big day for Rowena. It's moving day. No, we're not moving to a new facility. Rowena was just literally moved into this new enclosure about 10 minutes ago, and she's in her humid hide, and she poked her head out when I opened up her old enclosure and started taking stuff out, but she opted not to come out. She just poked her head out to see what I was doing and went back inside. It's not unusual because it's during the day and they generally sleep all day. She's a Brazilian rainbow boa, a Picrates syncria. <laughs> and she was uh, born on March 26th, 2018. So she's turning four years old at the end of this month. And she's been with me since May 22nd, 2018. So she was just eight weeks old when she arrived here. And she's been in a three foot long by 18 inch deep by 18 inch high enclosure. And this is a four foot long by two feet deep by 18 inch high enclosure. And I have taken all of her enclosure furnishings and put them into this new enclosure exactly how they were in her old enclosure. I just removed them one at a time and put them in here in the identical location. So nothing has changed for her. Everything is in the same exact identical location and position and I didn't clean any of her furniture. I put it all in here. Well, I cleaned her water out because she likes to interact with her water a lot. So it was messy, so I cleaned her water out. The things that are new are the added length and depth. And then this is her old perch from her other enclosure, which was obviously designed for a three foot long and not a four foot long enclosure. So I have moved it into her new enclosure and I've just put it diagonally because it's too short to put all the way across. It also doesn't really need to go all the way across because the other new thing is this sky hide that's on this side. Now, why didn't I just leave this in the three foot enclosure for the snake that's moving into that and give her a new horizontal perch? because this is her perch. It's been her perch for years. It has her smells on it. And I am going to leave it with her just as I am her other enclosure furnishings because they're hers. She's used to them and they are covered in her scent. I just put it diagonally instead of straight across. I don't wanna to make too many changes or new additions at this point. As you can see, because it's a bigger enclosure, it's deeper and longer, it looks more bare than their old enclosures. And I will show you what their old enclosures look like. Eventually, all four of my rainbow boas are going to move into these. But she is the first one that gets to move. These are the old enclosures. Her brother, Kilgara, is actually awake. He probably heard me messing with her. And so he's still in the 3 by 18 by 18 enclosure. And he will be the next one to move. I'm going to keep them in the same order. So he'll go on the bottom below her just like he was in this setup. But as you can see, I've kept the new setup identical to how I had it in the old enclosures. I just moved everything into a bigger space so it looks much more spread out. What I'll be doing as she gets used to this is I'll add more things in here so that there's not so much empty space. I just don't want her to be able to stretch out completely and move around, but they're usually a shy species and they appreciate being able to feel safe behind clutter. In fact, I already have one item that I'm definitely going to add and I can show you what that is, but I think I'm gonna wait and maybe put it in in a day or two after she's used to this space because the sky hide's brand new for her. Everything else is the same other than the position of her PVC is diagonal instead of straight across. And she does have a UVB light bar in here and then a halogen bulb, which the companies have been out of the cages for these Arcadia fixtures forever. I work here 24 seven. If I notice that she is messing with that during the day, then I'll have to take the bulb out until I can find a cover for it or make my own. 
but she typically sleeps all day and that's going to go off at night. Now I, I would like to see her out and basking. Her old enclosure had a heat mat and this enclosure has the halogen and the UVB. Now her very original baby enclosure had halogen and UVB and she did come out during the day and bask and utilize that. So I'm hoping that she'll start to do that again. I'm going to add a rock over here on the warm side, maybe two, maybe um, a flat rock under the halogen and then maybe a thicker rock kind of in front of this hide and under the UVB. And then I'd like to add maybe a shelf along the back. And then I have a log that's going in here. I can show you what that looks like. So I'm putting aquarium logs in there and they're meant to float. I'm probably not going to put hers in water. Although if I give her a big swimming pool, because she does like to interact with water a lot, I may set it in the pool so that she has something to grip onto while she's in there. But here's the size you can see here. So they're large enough for a medium snake to crawl through and get in and also sit on top of. And the reason I went with this versus a real log is because the humidity for this species is kept a little higher than say my Brettles pythons and they do have real branches and real logs in their enclosures. I know there's some glare here. These are gonna be easier to keep clean. They shouldn't mold. Because of just all of the water that's involved with this species, especially Rowena, she likes to interact with water a lot. I feel better using plastic or whatever this is made of because it's gonna be easier to clean, disinfect if I have to. It's not gonna mold or anything or break down from the water or humidity. But as I said, my Brettles pythons, like here's a good example. She has a real actual wooden log that I collected from Pike National Forest here in Colorado. And her enclosure isn't really kept humid. She's got a humid hide in here, but I'm able to keep wood and things in here without it molding, but that's a different species. And here's what the log looks like. They're made by Zoomed. One thing I don't like, and I have ordered these before, is they send them with styrofoam packing. And I understand that they don't want them to break, but the styrofoam, number one, is horrible for the environment. And it's just really, really messy, and it tends to cling on to the log, so I always have to rinse these off with water before I can put them in the enclosures. So I've just gotten this one out. The styrofoam just gets everywhere and it's difficult to clean. It, it's just not good if a pet ingests it, it's not good for the environment. I wish they would pack it with some other kind of packing material, but I'm gonna go wash this one off. I rinsed the log off inside and out with warm water, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it in here even though she hasn't really come out and explored yet. And that's just because I have it ready, I might as well put it in there. She is the most outgoing of the two Brazilian rainbow bows that I have. And I have other videos where she has actually chosen to come out just a handful of times and explore activity stations and novel things. So for her, I really think that she'll be curious and interested in this log. And it isn't gonna be something that scares her or makes her anxious or tips her over the edge or anything like that. So I will obviously watch her interaction to her new enclosure and to the two new items that are in here. One is that log and the other one is the sky hide. And it is right next to one of my workstations. So I will be sitting literally right next to her observing how she interacts in her new enclosure with her old enclosure furnishings and with the new items that I've put in there. I've tried to keep any changes simple for now, and I do that whenever I change animals to a new enclosure. Even if it's not the furnishing that's gonna stay in there permanently, or even if I intend to add more things, I keep everything identical until they get used to the new space, and I make changes gradually. I'm gonna go grab some of her old substrate right now and scatter it over this new substrate. This is old substrate. I directly took it out of the enclosure that she just left, and it's a mixture of cypress mulch and echo earth. And I'm gonna take it and sprinkle it 
over the substrate that I put in this new one, which is cocoa husk. I just took that bowl of her old substrate mix and I scattered it randomly. I scattered some on each end and in the middle of her enclosure, I sprinkled a little bit on the log. And that way she's got smells in this new enclosure that are her scent that she's gonna be familiar with. And it's not going from her old enclosure to something that's completely new with all new objects and completely sterile and clean. It's gonna have her smells on it. It's going to be the identical furnishings and some of the literal identical substrate that she just left has all traveled with her to this new space. And hopefully that makes her more at ease and it makes her more comfortable and it helps her to feel more secure as she learns about her new home. Now, as far as her old enclosure, I didn't take all of the substrate out and I didn't pull substrate out if it had feces or urates directly on it. I didn't pull her old shed out. I tried to choose areas like this where the substrate wasn't messed up and that's the substrate that I moved over to her new enclosure. And so this enclosure is going to be cleaned out. I will make a new perch to hang in here for the new snake that's going in here. And it's not a new snake. It's just going to be a snake that is moving from a smaller enclosure up into this enclosure. And corn snakes are going to be going in here. And I have a Escalapian snake that's also planned to move into one of these enclosures. So right now all of those snakes are in um, 18 by 18 by 24 enclosures, or they're in two by two by 18 inch high enclosures. So it's gonna be an increase in size for those four snakes that are gonna be moving into these three by 18 by 18. Hi there, Kilgara. Yes, you're moving too. I just don't have your space ready yet. You're being particularly outgoing. Now these snakes are turning four years old and I have noticed this last six months that they have been visible more. They've been more confident. I've been seeing them more and I gather that's because they've been with me now almost four years and hopefully by now they've learned to trust a little bit and that they're just more confident to be out and visible because they've grown in size and they're older, bigger snakes. That's also what clued me in that it was time to move them to a bigger enclosure. I obviously want them to be an enclosure they can stretch out in and have space to move around in, but they've been so cryptic and so shy up until this last six months to a year, but really the last six months that I don't think they would have appreciated moving into a new space. They've been doing really well, thriving and feeling secure in this space. And for this particular species, knowing them as well as I've come to know them over the last four years, big changes aren't appreciated by them. At least when they were younger, they weren't. And that's just different than some of the other snakes that I work with, like a Morelia Bradley or a corn snake. I could probably move them into a new space at any time. And they wouldn't care how big the space was or if everything in the space was new. They would be curious about it. They would explore it. They would acclimate to it very quickly. And this species and some of the other species I work with just don't have that same resiliency. But I can see that these rainbow boas are developing more confidence and resiliency now that they're moving into adulthood. And I really am happy about that. I'm happy to see that he's out and curious about what I'm doing. And I'm anxious to see how they react with their new space. Okay, Serpente Sunday's viewers, moving from Brazil to Australia, here's one of my carpet pythons, and I didn't intend to film him for Serpente Sunday, but he's being really active right now, so I'm probably going to let him out. This is Asgard. He is, how old is he? Let me see. I don't even remember. I got him as an older animal. He wasn't a baby, and so when I do that, I don't always remember their exact birth dates. I know that is shocking. Oh, here's why I don't remember his exact birth date. I wasn't given one. I was just told that he was hatched in late 2017. And I was given no other specific information. 
and I was not given the breeder's information. I was just told it was a male um, albino Darwin carpet python hatched in late 2017 and that he had been raised up for outreach and that fit my needs. I had him tested for nidovirus and um, he was negative and he's microchipped and I had a wellness exam done when he arrived, so he's good to go. Let me quit talking and unlock his enclosure and let him out. On these enclosures with sliding acrylic doors, if you don't replace the acrylic with glass, and if you don't put a lock on it, I just dropped the keys. If you don't replace the acrylic doors with glass, and if you don't put a lock on them, the snakes can bend the acrylic it bows and they can squeeze through and once they learn how to do that they tend to repeatedly do that which is why tc has three locks on his acrylic doors i may eventually end up replacing all of these acrylic doors with glass asgard's hungry i know that's why he wants out right now I'm just going to open both sides of his enclosure and he can come out if he wants to. I don't have anything prepared to feed him right now, but he can eat. So I definitely think I'll go thaw something for him and do a little training session since he is bright and alert and very active, obviously. And he is in a Zen habitat. It's a four by two by two. Now the shelf that's in here is from blackboxcages.com. They sell shelves that you can permanently affix to enclosures. This is one of their portable shelves. And then I've added a perch underneath the shelf. He's got a Mag Naturals hide that's um, magnetized to the side of the enclosure. And then he has a Sky Hide that's from Reptile Basics. Just different stuff for him to use and do.